Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am back today with another watercolor tutorial. Finally, it's been way too long since I was able to sit down and do one of these. I think sometimes I just have to remind myself what are my true priorities? And you know, I'm just one of those people where I get caught up in a lot of other things, a lot of other little project ideas that I have, and then suddenly I realize that I have edged out all of the time that I would really need to spend doing the things that, you know, are truly important to me and the reason that I created this channel. So I am going to try to do a tutorial every day this week and it's going to be more birds. Specifically, I think I'm going to focus on like chickens and ducks. I just love watching them. There's chickens on my parents' farm and I live by a park where there's always ducks. So I'm always thinking about them, always seeing them when I'm out and about. So today I am painting a hen. I'm doing the drawing here, just kind of speeding it up along the way, and there will be a drawing template available for you if you would like to download that, print it, and transfer it to your own paper so you don't have to worry about the drawing that is available to you. And for at least the first 24 hours that this video is published, this template is going to be free. And maybe it's going to be free for even longer than 24 hours because sometimes I forget to update them. But just to tell you a little bit about my templates, you can get them in two places. I put them on my Gumroad page and on my Etsy shop, and they're available as instant downloads. So as soon as you purchase them, you will get an email where you can download the template for free and then you can print it off and use that to transfer to your paper. Now, Gumroad is the only platform that allows me to sell things for free and to not charge any price at all. So if you are watching this within the first 24 hours or so, then check out the Gumroad link so that you can get it for free. Otherwise, after 24 hours, I try to update them so it's just a small price, usually about $3.50, and often I am offering these at a discount on my Etsy page. So if you're watching this right now on April 27th, I think it is, if you're watching it now and I think until May 26th, I have a sale in my Etsy shop where all of my digital downloads are 30% off, so it's even less. If you go to my Etsy shop, I'm not sure if I can do sales on Gumroad. I haven't spent a ton of time on that site other than to make free templates. So that's just uh, one way that you can support my work and let me know that you like my tutorials, and it really helps me out. And let's get on with this tutorial. So the colors I'll be using for this are just going to be yellow ochre, pearl red, I think that is burnt sienna, and I'm not going to use that darker umber color, I think that that's sepia, and I'm going to use some Payne's gray and also some phthalo blue. The phthalo blue I'm mostly just going to use to create a nice bright green for the background. And the photo reference that I used for this painting didn't really have any green in it, but I feel like green is such a beautiful complement for this bird because there's so many reds and oranges in this bird. So that's why I decided that I would just kind of go with some green and I'm going to keep it really subtle. The background I want to keep relatively simple. It's going to be a wet into wet wash through and through. And I'm going to have some color variations. And right now I'm just being careful to place the color around the bird's head and so I don't get any unintentional bleeding in there. So I did not pre-wet the paper, but because this paper is 100% cotton, it's 140 pounds, it really retains a lot of moisture very well. This is Fabriano paper. And the size that I'm painting on is 5 by 7 so it's a really nice size for a quick study. Of course, if you get the template, you can actually adjust the size so it prints out to whatever size you prefer. 
So that's another great thing about using templates. I'm adding in a little bit of yellow ochre here because what I wanted was some greens in the background, especially around the chicken's head because that's where a lot of the nice bright reds and oranges are. And then as I work my way down, I want it to just get a little bit more muted, a little bit warmer, and so there's gonna be a lot more yellow ochre that I add into the foreground. And in the foreground, I'll also have a little bit of texture that I go in with later. And this is basically very strong yellow ochre here. There's of course, a few of those other colors in the mix just from before, but I've added a lot of yellow ochre to really brighten this up. And I'm leaving it pretty light at the bottom. I'm just painting right over where the legs are going to be because they're not important. And I'm basically just going to be painting in a subtle suggestion of where the chicken's legs are because they're just really not important. I really wanted to focus on the colors in the chicken and the textures of the feathers. Just brightening up some of these greens by adding a little bit more phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is a very strong pigment, so if you're using it, just make sure that you're very aware of that because when you add it in, it can really overpower every other color. But I love phthalo blue for creating really bright, warm, beautiful greens. And here I've added some of my Payne's Gray into the mix. Payne's Gray is a really nice color that if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm completely addicted to Payne's Gray at this point. I'm kind of newish to that color because it doesn't typically come in a set of primaries and I often do buy my watercolors in sets because it tends to be just a little bit less expensive. So I eventually decided to branch out a little bit and experiment with some other colors and Payne's Gray was one of them and I just absolutely love it. It's actually a very muted blue. kind of Well, it's gray of course, but it's a very cool gray and so I'll often use it as a blue, but it's also just a great color to add shadows, to add texture. So I just love it. And so I went in toward the bottom and just added a little bit of texture, kind of a dry brush technique where I put a little bit of pigment on my brush and then I blot my brush off onto my paper towel. And then I just go in there with a very light touch to add a little bit of texture. And now my approach for painting this chicken is going to be where I apply a wash all over and I'm starting out with the lightest and brightest color that I can discern in the photo reference. So I'm going in with just some yellow ochre. And by the way, for any of my tutorials, the colors that I use are just suggestions. I don't, I'm definitely not someone who thinks that you need to use specific colors to achieve specific things. I really think that any colors will work. And then here I've muted the yellow down a little bit by just adding a bit of Payne's Gray into it. And one thing I wanna make sure to do is leave some whites in the tail feathers of the chicken. And now I'm going to use my burnt sienna to start going in while everything is still wet and applying a wash on the upper part of the bird. So the head and the breast area and a little bit of the wing where I see that it's a little bit warmer. I really loved the coloration of this hen because there's a really beautiful transition between warmer tones in the head and breast area, and then it transitions to these really light white tail feathers. And so that was the reason that I chose this photo reference for this painting. And I wanted to start out kind of simple too, because this week I want to paint a lot of chickens and ducks, and I already have some of the ideas picked out for what I'm going to do next, and they're gonna be a little bit more complex. So I wanted to start out with one that was relatively simple. So it's just one chicken and kind of in profile view, which is typically how we think about chickens in our minds. And the coloration is fairly simple and straightforward, and yet not boring. So lots of interest in here. I'm starting to go in 
and very subtly work in a little bit of texture. Everything is still wet, so I'm not going to get any hard lines here, and I don't, I definitely don't want any hard lines. But I do want to keep working while things are wet so that I keep a really nice soft edge going in with some Pearl Red. And this is also a very strong color if you end up using a Pearl Red. And I'm going to work on the crest and the red features on the head of the bird. Kind of bringing those out. But I'm starting out very light. I'm not going in with the strongest red. I'm adding a lot of water to the mix. And I'm just starting to work out where these details are. And if you think back to my drawing, my drawings are pretty simple. It's mostly an outline and then I'll add a few strokes where some of the more prominent features are. But overall I keep it very subtle in the drawing phase. And then when I start doing watercolor, I use a light block in technique to work out where some of the distinguishments are going to be. And I do that so that I don't have to be too preoccupied with the drawing phase. I want to keep my watercolors very painterly and loose, so I don't want a lot of line work. I don't want to feel like I'm doing a coloring page or something like that. And so I have to keep these colors very light at first because if you go in too bold too fast and it ends up being a mistake, then it's a little bit more difficult to work around that than if I just start out with a very light wash and block in. And now at this point you can really see this transition. I have the base layers for this chicken in where the transition goes from a lot of red on the head and then it moves into yellows and oranges. And then toward the back end of the body and the tail feathers there's a lot of white and it's very light. And now I'm going to start very lightly going in with some yellow ochre to start working in some of the more subtle differentiations between the feathers and a little bit of the texture in the lighter areas. And again, because I want to keep this area very light, I'm going to use a very watered down mix and a very light touch. And as I look at my photo reference, I'm not trying to copy every single feather that I can see in the photograph. I'm just trying to get an impression of the direction of the feathers. So I've zoomed in here so that you can hopefully see a little bit better. I'm still using this very light wash of yellow ochre. It's not pure yellow ochre, of course. And I'm starting to add in some of these shorter feathers in the front in the breast area. And again, I'm not trying to go in and copy every single little feather that I can see. I'm just taking note of the general texture and direction, and that is what I am painting. And as long as I keep these marks very light, then they'll have a really nice, subtle, and soft feeling to them. And with watercolor, of course, I, I don't think it can be stated enough, but you always want to start out really, really light because if areas need a little bit more contrast, a little bit more distinguishment, you can do that later. You work from your light values and your bright colors, and as you progress, you start using your darker colors and your more subdued colors. And what's really important is to let some of those more subtle and bright colors and lighter colors show through the darks. And that's how you achieve a sense of dimension and form with watercolor. So here I've added a little bit more Payne's Gray. And what I'm doing after I dip my brush into the pigment, I am dipping it into the water and then blotting it off onto my paper towel and you might almost think that this would make it impossible to make any mark. But in order to get these really light marks, it is really important to just make sure that you're going in with the lightest pigment possible. And this is one way that I find is easiest to really control those lighter values is to make sure that I have the minimum amount of pigment in my brush that I need. 
of course, if you ever do find yourself in a situation where you've put too much pigment into an area, what you can do is take your paper towel, especially if your paper towel is already a little bit damp from blotting your brush before, and just gently press it down into the area where you've applied too much pigment. And you can usually find that you are able to lift a lot of that off. Maybe not all of it, but it's a good technique that I've found when I do accidentally go in with way too much pigment. I want to add some brighter reds to the crest up here. I really want to play with that contrast between the red in the chicken's head and then those subdued greens right behind the head. And then I'm also going in with a very light touch just to add the eye with some Payne's Gray. A little bit of definition there and then also a little definition on the bottom of the beak. I'm not outlining the beak, I'm letting the top be very light and a little bit undefined. And then also adding just a little bit more definition around the head to show some of these features. Again though I'm keeping this Payne's Gray very light, very subtle and I'm using that to add a little bit of shadow and definition into the darker areas of the chicken. And this is all really done with a dry brush technique. So my brush is always blotted off into my paper towel off to the side before I make any of these marks. And that allows me to have a lot more control of the marks that I make. And at this stage of the painting process, it really is a lot of dry brush just because the way that I build up my paintings is I like to apply my washes early on in order to establish the undertones and the general color gradations and transitions. And then I like to go in and do a lot of dry brush where there's not much water in my brush. It's mostly pigment and very subdued colors. And that is how I start to build up the texture. And here I'm going to just add in the legs. As I said before, they're just going to be very, very simple. I'm not painting in the feet because I'm imagining that this chicken is walking in grass, even though in the photo reference it's not, it's on some hay. And you can check out that photo reference. I've linked it below. It's from pixabay.com, which is a great website to get copyright free photographs to get you started doing paintings. I usually find that I need to change the photographs just a little bit to kind of fit my vision, but I feel like photographs are a great jumping off point. Of course, doing plein air is completely different and a very wonderful experience, but sometimes it's nice just to sit in your studio and be able to focus on the painting and the technique. So now we're just about finished with this tutorial. I've done most of the texture work at this point. I do want to keep those feathers very, very subtle and soft. I don't want to go overboard. So at this point I'm going to leave those alone because I feel like there is enough in there. And I left the tail feathers extremely simple, of course, because I want to really give the impression of that transition between the reds and oranges into the white tail feathers. And so it's important if you want to leave an area white that you don't overdo it by adding too many other values and overly define some of the features, even if you can see them in the photograph. Leaving light white areas simple, I find is the best way to handle them. And then I went in and added just a little bit more yellow ochre as a glaze over the bottom portion of the painting because I felt like the Payne's gray was just a little bit too stark and didn't fit very well. You can barely see the yellow ochre that I have on my palette here. It's very, very light. And this is all that I'm going to really do in the tail feathers is just add this very, very light little bit of definition and texture in there because again less is more when it comes to light areas and then I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre texture into some of the shorter feathers where I feel like it needs to be brightened up just a little bit 
or where I want a little bit more texture, but I know that going darker is not going to be the solution that I really want. And another thing I like to do is kind of allow some of the colors from the background to merge in with the subject. And so that's what I'm doing just a little bit here, adding a little bit of yellow ochre toward the outer edges of the bird and letting that kind of flow into the background because I feel like that just gives it a little bit of a soft, dreamy look. At this point, the painting is basically finished. I do sometimes find myself fiddling around toward the end of the painting, and it's something that we all have to be mindful of because you never really have a stopping point for a painting, but I think that once you can look at your painting and see that you have achieved your goals, and it's always a good idea to set some very simple straightforward goals for yourself at the beginning of the painting. For me it was really just to kind of explore the contrast between the reds and the greens and also that nice color transition within the chicken itself. And so right now I'm just going back into the head and looking for any opportunity to kind of make some additional definitions with this nice muted color that's mostly Payne's gray and pure old red and a little bit of yellow ochre. So it's a very nice neutral color. And so I decided just to kind of define the eye a little bit more. But that is basically going to be it for this painting. I'm going to make myself stop. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you'll decide to subscribe to my channel. There's going to be lots more tutorials coming, especially this week, and there will be templates. And as I said, it's going to be kind of chickens and ducks this week, because that's what is on my mind. Thanks!